So a very interesting find we just came upon out in the, in the mountains of Chiapas that uh, we're going to talk about on today's Hot Zone. This is the Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here, and we were just driving down the road on our way to our next stop when we came upon this huge party happening in front of a Catholic church kind of up in the mountains. A bunch of indigenous folks from the Toktil tribe that I've never heard of before are uh, having a, a festival for uh, a saint that they call Esquipulas. Now, Esquipulas is a place in Guatemala that has a 500-year-old church with a very famous statue of Christ in it. The, he's black, and uh, the, the, the black Christ is uh, something that people come from all over, Catholics come from all over on pilgrimages to, uh, to worship this guy. So. Uh, this is a festival I guess they have every year, um, and very interesting stuff here. I'm in this room, uh, this big room full of uh, full of these guys wearing fur coats, these these heavy black fur coats, look like from bear or something, and they're playing music. You can hear behind me. They've got pine needles on the floor uh, here, and the women are making uh, a, a drink made from a corn mash uh, and I, I believe some kind of liquor that uh, they're they're cooking and cooking and cooking and they're boiling this stuff down and tomorrow when they culminate this uh, this big party they're gonna they're gonna drink it but they're already drinking quite a bit uh, over here behind me there's a guy that's uh, pouring moonshine for everybody and uh, they let us try a little bit it's pretty strong stuff I'll tell you uh, for sure uh, that's back behind me over there and then they've got this cross a series of crosses here behind me with flowers and candles and incense and all this stuff uh, it's kind of a subdu subdued uh, mood here but maybe it's just because of the culture because the people have been very very friendly we showed up out of nowhere uninvited and sort of crashed their party but um, they've been very nice to us so far uh, but I, I do notice that some of these pots that they're boiling are big enough for a person, so I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, and I'm going to talk to some of them and try to find out a little mo bit more about this, uh, this whole tradition uh, right now. Let's check it out. No, es Atol. Es una bebida. Es una bebida. El maíz. Atol. Uh, we're here at a small celebration um, of these uh, people, indigenous people that um, are celebrating the Lord of Esquipulas, El Señor de Esquipulas. Uh, we have seen a group of uh, little children uh, in disguise as dance. traditional music. Uh. El Festival de Esquipulas. Sí, mañana es melodía. Ah. Hoy maitín. They're doing some sort of uh, tamales over there and um, they're drinking mezcal, which is also kind of like a, a custom over here. Mezcal, mezcal is actually pretty good, although too strong for me. Um, they say that uh, usually the, uh, the celebration goes for uh, months at a time here, like, uh, oh, sorry, the celebration goes all the entire month of January. And um, we, we have seen uh, that they have, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, adorned, adorned, the, uh, adorned the, um, the church in a way that it looks really festive. 
uh, they stay, they're about to eat, so that's why they're making the tamales. And these are very um, generous, friendly people. Uh, the moment we got here, uh, one of these guys uh, in dressed in a, real, in, a, in a really cool uh, it, um, fur coat, fur coat made of sheepskin, uh, offered us something to drink, and then just took us inside, uh, have us drink a little bit of mezcal and see how they are doing the tamales. So it's actually pretty, pretty cool out right here. So do you know anything about this particular tribe of people? Uh, there is Chokchil or something like that? Chokchil, yeah, something like that. Do yeah, you know anything about them? No, no, uh, the only thing I was able to find out is that some of the uh, children that were dancing were holding some kind of guns and that praised the Zapatista Rebellion somehow. The Zapatista Rebellion? The Zapatista Rebellion. So this is, tell me about it, this place and the Zapatista Rebellion. Well, uh, this place, is, uh, near here is San Cristóbal de las Casas, the, one of the main cities, and that's where the Zapatista Rebellion began. Um, these people are actually pre really proud of that rebellion because uh, it granted them some concession and uh, some conquest, some social conquest for them. Um, they were recognized, you know, uh, by the Mexican government. And that's why they, uh, until this day, they praise that rebellion. And well, I mean, the, uh, the dancing include uh, children, uh, these guys is in clown outfits, but uh, with guns uh, in a, sim a symbolic uh, allusion to the uh, Zapatista rebellion. So are these, like, these must be descendants of the Aztecs, I guess, huh? Yeah, uh, most likely, uh, it must be some descendants of between Aztec or Mayan culture, you know, being so close to the uh, Guatemalan border. We know for, for a fact that Guatemala and the southern part of Mexico share the uh, Mayan culture. So they must be descendants of Mayans. So this is San Cristobal de las Casas. It's a beautiful, mountain town in Chiapas State. It's uh, populated mostly by indigenous people, like the Chokchigu that we, that we just saw up in the mountains on our way here. And 26 years ago this week, this courtyard or this big town square that I'm walking around in right now was the scene of bloody violence when the Zapatista movement, some of you, if you're old enough, you might remember that, uh, this was a, an army of indigenous people from several different tribes who were very angry about things like land rights and um, NAFTA, when NAFTA was enacted. Uh, they thought they were going to basically lose their shirts over that. And so they elected a guy that called himself Subcomandante Marcos. And they took over this church and the government buildings here in this city center of San Cristobal de, de las Casas. And the government, uh, they also took over several other city centers uh, around Chiapas. And uh, long story short, the violence went on for about two weeks. The Mexican government uh, kind of dealt with it with a heavy hand. And so in the end, by like January 12th or so of, uh, of 1994, um, it, the whole thing was over. About 300 people had been killed. Uh, some of the wealthy landowners, I guess, uh, worried about the Zapatista army had started forming like uh, militia groups or private security groups to guard their land holdings. And there was a lot of like extrajudicial killings and a lot of violence that was out here. Uh, and so I guess in talking to the Chokchi Indians that we saw today uh, having their festival of uh, esquipulas at their church uh, that uh, apparently the kids dressed like creepy clowns dancing around with guns was uh, part of the way that they memorialize that uprising 26 years ago and uh, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Look at this little girl here. Hola. <laughs> They, around here kids don't have smartphones, they actually have to go to work with their parents and help make some money, which is a really good thing, I think, and uh, we ought to make more of our kids help with the family business. Me gusta. So, I've been walking around this, uh, this town square, it's pretty fascinating, there's a lot of hippie gringos here, that's the only part I don't like. Uh, apparently, uh, European travelers have found this place and 
uh, very few Americans have, but uh, it's really beautiful. Work it, work it. Okay, Mommy. It's got a great downtown like shopping district and lots of little cafes and stuff like that. But the only problem is if you go into those cafes, you're going to get assaulted by lots and lots of moonies and... What I call sharks that people, you know, trying to sell you things. I mean, like every 10 seconds, somebody's going to walk up and try to sell you something. So you really can't eat on the street, even though it would be very beautiful and nice to do so. But uh, at least right now, uh, with all these people trying to sell you stuff, it's not a good idea. Anyway, so I hope you like this episode of the podcast. We got more coming. I'm... Uh, I may have to take a couple days off next week because we got some issues with my mom to deal with. Uh, but stick around. We got lots more good stuff coming this year. Thanks for watching The Hot Zone. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.